Yeah, back in the field with the track stars, Ryan Righteous, Sean Tanner, DJ Jeremiah. <laughs> All right. This is uh, your favorite segment in the world, Noteworthy. Um, it's mine because this is where you guys get a chance to actually write to us and tell us what you're actually dealing with. And the way it's set up is awesome because you do you could do it anonymously. Nobody knows who you are. Yeah. You don't have to worry about backlash or anything like that. And you can just soak in the advice and you know it's not personal, you know it's not anything like that. So hopefully this is uh, something that will benefit you guys. If, if you want to send in a Noteworthy, make sure you go to um, trackstarsradio.com and um, you just search for Noteworthy and fill out a form for us and um, it'll send it straight to us. And there's been a lot coming in, so you may you know be in line or whatnot, but still send it in because we, we have them all you know scheduled for the next couple weeks. So keep sending. We love reading what you guys are dealing with. We pray for you guys. So uh, yeah. All right. This one is called Temptation. All right, they say, what's going on, Track Stars? I'm a big fan of your show. So I'm having some trouble right now. I'm a 16-year-old guy who loves the Lord, but it seems as if I can't line my will up with this, with his. I'm, um, I've been tempted in pornography, oral sex, etc. for about four years. I thought that by this point I would be over this, but apparently I'm not. I've taken all the necessary steps to overcome this. I've gotten saved. I've read my word and my daily devotionals, go to church and youth group, pray, and whenever I'm tempted to sin, I call on his help. I've asked one of my boys to be my accountability partner, who I tell all of these things to. The thing is, he's my age and going through similar trials, so I know I should probably find someone older. Anyway, even after doing these things, my mind always takes me somewhere that I know I shouldn't be. I try to stop thinking about it, but then I think about not thinking about it. Well, you get it. After I've given in and the deed is done, I always beat myself up, which I guess is a good thing, and feel terrible. I tell myself I'll never never do it again, but another side of me reminds me of all the times I've fallen and I feel like there's no point in trying. So the cycle begins again. Again, this has been about four years uh, of the same old thing. I'm in bondage and I know I'm doing something wrong. I just don't know what. I appreciate y'all for all you do. Please take this post in consideration on the next Noteworthy. God bless. Mm. Temptation. What do y'all think? Man. Mm. Oh, I remember being in that position. I remember being in a position where um, so much evil is going on around you, then you don't know where the buck stops. You know what I mean? Like you, you have so many friends that are not accountability partners to you and your walk. So you've got people around you that are you know, constantly showing you, constantly telling you that, you know, this is the right thing and the feeling's natural, the emotion is natural. It's hard, man. That's very difficult. I mean, I was blessed to have an accountability partner um, who was uh, now a pastor, then we kept each other in line. So, I mean, I really, really, um, my heart goes out to him because it is wrong and it is hard to, you know, get away from something that's, that's in this world so natural. I don't know. Just, you want to speak on it, Sincere? Um, I, I don't um, <laughs> Honestly I, I, I don't know um, Kind of what to say He says he, had, he has an accountability partner um, But everybody around that age group Is kind of dealing with the same thing um, I know kind of um, Who talked about The truth talked about a little bit in the Hunger Games Right um, He talked about kind of You know the average thing that's going on For almost every adult You know young male And so um, I guess which you say you had an accountability partner who is yeah. now a pastor, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, the thing that I got from that is that you had an accountability partner um, that was really strong in his faith, right? And I don't know how old he was. Same but age. Same age. Well, he was really strong. Mm -hmm. And so you want to get an accountability partner that's extremely strong. If your accountability partner is weak and mm -hmm. you're weak, then you guys may, you know, fall together and just talk about it. You know what I mean? And fall again and then talk about it and fall some more and talk about it. You may want to seek out um, stronger accountability partners and people who can really, you know, keep you accountable, keep you respect. Um, OK, so specific things. You mentioned pornography and um, I don't remember if you said how old you were. Say 16. 16. OK, yeah. this is perfect. Um, I would say around that same time, I was dealing with the same thing. Actually, exactly that same time. And um, and I remember 
that feeling of being trapped. Like, I know this is wrong. I actually did a piece about this called, um, to be honest. And in that piece, I was like, man, I'm supposed to be the godly Christian teenager guy, but I'm obviously doing something I'm not supposed to be doing. Why can't I stop doing it? And it's hard because as a guy, the pornography thing gets you because it starts off slow. You're like, man, I just like looking at beautiful women. So you put up, you find pictures of beautiful women. And then those women like to take their clothes off all randomly and willy nilly. So then you look at that picture and then they just start taking more stuff off and you want to see where it goes. And it's, it's, it's intended to drag you in. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and when you get far enough, you don't even have to look for it anymore. They start sending stuff to you. Man, yeah, look yeah, at this. Yeah, look at this. Ain't this cool? Um, so that is an addiction. That's a that's a that's something that could grip you. And I remember in my piece I wrote, I said it almost felt like I was trying to find the next best I had. It was almost like a collection. Like I was trying to collect images in my mind of the next girl or whatever. And it wasn't until I realized like. And I started thinking about me as what I want to be as a man. Like, what do I want to be as a dad and a husband? I don't want to be the guy that's sneaking off into the room. I don't want to be the guy that leaves my wife and cheats on her. So man. what needs to change for me not to be that dude? And I knew that was one of those things. Um, so and I think you're right in, the, in where I'm at with that. Because I prayed to God. I was like, God, if you give me a girlfriend, I won't watch porn no more. And, and I prayed that and he answered it. I got a girlfriend. I haven't watched porn since I was 17. Since. Unfortunately, when you get a real person, things happen there that yeah. shouldn't happen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So my prayer was answered, but I didn't realize that the real issue was still there. Yeah, it's you know, even though he, I, I'm, I was so grateful for him taking that because it was so embarrassing to be hiding in your room and oh, what's that you know that's such oh, yeah. a stupid you know looking sin um but what's even stupider is when you're doing it in, with a real person you start yeah. doing things that you're not supposed to be doing and um that's when i was like oh okay that prayer i prayed the real part of the prayer was i want to be a godly man that was the sincere part of that prayer and i had to revisit it and say you know what god i'm about to go to college um or and even during the beginning of college and all my friends that were around me said you know once you get to college you're not gonna make it it's not gonna happen you're gonna mess up start bringing condoms with you start doing this start doing that and i just knew that wasn't true i knew deep down it wasn't true that you had yeah. to do it um so i just started praying every day god make me into the godly man you want me to be and so um, i feel so i feel where you're at because um it's a hard thing to do when you feel like you're doing it on your own it wasn't until like later on I met Ryan and I found out Ryan was doing the same thing I was doing and trying to be pure where you could bounce things off of them and be like, hey, what, what do you think about this? Should I do this with this girl or should I should I spend a night or should I do this? And you could be like, mm, I don't know, because if, if the person you're talking to has a heart for God, too, and they're trying to do the same thing, they'll give you good advice. They'll give yeah. you good feedback. Yeah. If this dude is doing the same thing you're doing, um, it's going to be tough. So. My final piece of advice for you, pray that prayer and see what God does. Um, but most importantly, the oral sex part, you have to have oral sex with people. And if if these people are willing to do this with you, you may have to leave them alone. Yeah. Don't even put yourself in a position. Don't even be around people who are willing to do that with you. You may have to cut all these people off. And that sounds harsh, but um, I remember having to do that as well. You know, I had to. I remember realizing that I had a bunch of girls in my circle that were not serious for me but they were possibilities and i left yeah. them as possibilities yeah. i remember one day god convicted me and he told me call every single one of those girls that think they have a chance with you and you know they don't and tell them it's not gonna happen to spare their heart wow and i i remember calling and they all hated me completely hated me but um i needed to do that to br break that line of dependency on the affirmation i was getting from these women so maybe that'll help and my last, um, my last piece of advice to you is going to be um, look and see how far back this thing goes. You know, look and see if it's a generational curse, um, because the generational curse uh, has ties to it that are uh, outside of your control. Like, you know how the Bible talks about some things can only come out by, uh, by fasting. Prayer and fasting yeah. yeah. That might be one of those situations because in my family we had um, that that generational curse, and um, my father is uh, deceased now. But my father was the first person that gave me my first pornographic magazine, 
And for me, that was difficult because my father was a man of God, you know what I mean? And I'm a man of God. And yeah. with my father's approval, everything just seemed okay. Yeah. And it, it was it was hard for me because I had to go to the word and remind myself, like, I had to be the parent in the situation where my father was kind of like, you know, all right, you know, do what you got to do. I mean, my dad always told me men are going to be men, you know, and that's yeah. just the situation. And I looked at where I was coming from and I looked at my dad and I looked at my uncles. I looked at my grandfather and I started seeing that there's a generational curse and that I have to be the one to break that curse. So the things that my father approved for, of me to do, I won't be approving of my son to do. And I think that those are the big things that you have to look at is you have to look at your family history and you have to look at how strongly this spirit, because it's a spirit that's on you right now. And you have to look at how strongly this spirit is uh, represented in your family and try to break that generational curse and, and, and be very, very wise um, about the people that you go, you go around and the people that um, you share your story with because you can share your story with a brother in Christ and he may be doing the same thing and he may say, uh, it's okay. So definitely be safe there. So is there time for me to say anything? Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, just one thing, you know, the word of God says, uh, it just pretty much compares Christianity or this this whole thing of being a Christian with like a race and uh, it says you know run it you know pretty much run it like a marathon and not like a sprint and uh, the reality of it is is that we're all gonna fall the Bible says the righteous man falls seven times but gets back up you know as long as you're still on that race there are gonna be times in your walk with God where you're gonna be you're gonna be sprinting you're gonna be on fire there's gonna be times where you're gonna be feeling low and you might lose energy and you're gonna be walking and then there's going to be times, you know, like where you're going to fall. But there's a difference between falling, getting back up, walking and running than living a lifestyle totally contrary, just a willing lifestyle. And um, and so as long as you consistently are fighting, because because eventually you are going to get through this. That's the reality of it. And I, and I pray that in Jesus name, eventually you are going to get through this. You're going to get a breakthrough, but it is going to be something else. And, uh, and I'm not speaking that on you. That's just the reality. It's always going to be something and but as long as you keep fighting all the way until your death you will gain that reward and, and god will be there at the finish line there for you and he will say well done my good and faithful servant and that's the reality of it so just keep fighting keep pushing if you sin man five men just repent go back after god it doesn't matter if you just sinned five minutes ago man go after god god sees you as pure he sees you as right and he desires your heart if there's one thing the enemy desires for you to do it, the enemy he ultimately desires for you to just give up and say man i've done this a hundred times and i keep doing this okay keep going even if it's a hundred times more go after god seek god seek brothers in christ seek people in christ that are more mature than you and follow them as they follow christ people that have overcome that thing um so so that's my encouragement um, hey guys, I'll be real quick. I am Shantana's sister, Camille hey. Grant. Hello guys. Um, I really, really um, admire your courage. I'm so proud of you for just being so honest to the world with what you're going through right now. And it's giving me the courage to um, share a little bit of my testimony. And um, a lot of what I've dealt with was sexual thoughts. And it was a big thing in my life since I was young. And um, I wanted to say it's not, I never dealt with pornography or oral sex or anything like that, but I don't think it's any different from the mental aspect because you could just watch radar movies and a clip that just comes and it keeps re rewinding in your mind over and over again. Just that one scene, that could be just as powerful as you just going online and looking at a woman or whatever you're doing in your life. And I want to say it's, I'm, I'm no different from you and we just need to pray together and then we can work through it. And um, I wanna also talk to you about the, um, what do you call it, the accountability partner. You did an amazing first step. That yeah. was the hardest thing I had to do was to confess to somebody who I could trust, not tell someone else because I wasn't ready to share what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm so strong that I'm able to, to tell you guys. I talked to Sean about that and my, my parents are praying about me about this right now. And um, I just want to say you're doing a great job with that. Um, I definitely encourage you to get someone who is older, not a female, an older male who yeah. has already gone through it and is not being tempted with it over and over again. They're strong. It's over with them. 
and they're doing better. And um, also, uh, you hear a lot of parents saying, hey, don't do this, don't do this. That's great, but you need to have an action. Oh, there's a time limit. Okay, sorry. Just, um, no. okay. On the trip. But real quick, you're on something. I want to show you this. This is a booklet that I highly encourage you to try and purchase and do this with an accountability partner. It's called, um, James Baker wrote it, and it's just a diary, and it has a lot of Bible verses and um, different quotes, and you write a lot of stuff. You do this with your accountability partner, and you do it once a week. It is so powerful, and I highly encourage you to do it. And um, in the front of the book, I do things to help me with action steps, because you might be like, okay, what do I do? What's the next step? So just a couple things. Try not to watch radar movies. Um, read books. I used to love reading novels. Try not to do that because some scenes in the books can be worse than radar movies. So you need to be careful with that. And now I'm reading only Christian novels because it's safer. Um, other things like specific things. I want to make sure you are dealing with this. Don't do it. Um, I am not doing bubble baths anymore. I don't know about you guys, but I thought that was too sensual for me. So I don't do that. Um, <laughs> Other things, don't ever feel like you're alone. I've never yeah. been in a relationship and that has been a struggle for me. Being alone, just know that you are a child of the Most High. He is with you always. Um, yeah. There's other things, but just have a great accountability partner and always pray earnestly, nonstop. Yeah. But um, that's all I have. I can't believe I'm not crying right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying a lot right now, but thank you for your time. Cool. Um, I guess the the last thing I want to say with with all the great advice um, that you guys have given, um, and with the amazing testimony, um, there is a point that um, I guess Sean shared with me, where you guys experienced victory. It was you guys. Um, it was a phone call that you guys had between you know Sean and Ryan, oh. and um, it was you know after you guys got married and you said, "Yo, we did it right." It was oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we we've we've done we've done it right. And that victory came, and I mean, if you guys can just just say how great that victory felt at the end of the day, because I mean, a lot of people will say, "Do this, do that, do this, do that," right? And they don't. Nobody ever tells them what it feels like at the end of the day to say, "Hey, brother, we've made it across the finish line, and thank God that we were able to do that." So, <laughs> how, how great did that feel? We're laughing because I think we both are remembering that conversation like <laughs> together. And I think one of the funniest things about that conversation is when me and Sean were talking, we were like, the world was wrong. The world was wrong about this this act of sex. And, you know, um, uh, it, it was just, it was funny. We had a good conversation that night. We laughed and we were just really proud of each other. And um, that was definitely a testimony uh, to God. Be the glory for that. Y'all got married around the same time? About six, six months, months apart. apart. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, six months apart. And so, uh, yeah, I was like, Sean, I'll just wait till you get married, and I'll share my opinion with you, and then he shared his opinion. And it was nothing about details or anything like that. It was yeah, just really yeah, about, yeah, like, man. what the world says about it. It was really about what the world says about it and all the, all the hype that came behind it and the... And, and Sean and I looked at each other and we were talking and we were like, I can't believe relationships break up over this. I can't believe people's marriages end because of this act. You know what I'm saying? Like you can you can do that with one person and be satisfied and be happy and content. It didn't have to be. Yeah, know. I mean, it's just it's just like retribution for all the times you make fun of all the times you were called gay. Why are you still a virgin and you're 27, yeah. 28 years old? And it's yeah. like, well, I mean. How, how are you still walking around with all these kids and AIDS and you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and, and let me let me speak on the private real side. About it. No, but, no, man, just just because I mean, like that's that's how you feel so small growing up, mm -hmm. especially yeah, when you true. get older and you're like, man, mm -hmm. you make fun of you so much for holding on to this. I remember there was a girl from my high school that called me every single year at the same time and said, "Hey, Sean, you still a virgin?" Yeah. I was like, yeah. She was like, all right, cool. I guess that was her. That's a question I got. I was her proof that it was possible. I guess. I yeah, know. that's funny. I, I was a. Uh, uh, that was um, actually something that happened to me a lot too. Um, from a friend from high school, and she'd be like, "Cause I messed up so many times now, and you know, so many partners or whatever." But. Um, <laughs> What's funny to me is that, you know, I use it, I use it as a prideful tool. I'll just be honest, man. Like, I was, 
I wore glasses, I had acne, I had braces, I was skinny, I'm still skinny to this day, but you know, my wife is accepting of that. But I use it as a prideful thing because, man, my wife was a cheerleader. She plays violin. She's got a master's. Ah. Uh, she's beautiful. Got the and cheerleader. Yeah, I mean, I got everything that I could not have gotten back then. You took your day. girl. Yeah. <laughs> so, so now when I see the cheerleaders in high school that are all out of shape and didn't want me, I'm like, 45 kids. Yeah. Right, <laughs> no, nah, yeah. but really what it means is, is that all the affirmation you're looking for in the images and the affirmation you're looking for in the young ladies that are willing to give up their bodies for you that affirmation is fulfilled in god and god will fulfill your dreams in your wife you don't have to cheat that process and it's worth the wait um ryan and i do not regret for one second waiting for our wives because our wives are amazing and it's and they're better than we ever thought we we could get honestly um so just be patient man i know you're 16 and sounds it feels like a long road but use this time to become a great man yeah, please man. use this time spend all of your time figuring out how to become a great man of god nothing else is important pick up you. hobbies man like you know f find new talents new traits man. exercise you know just just really just not even just morally but just as a person just better yourself in different ways that's one thing because because i'm i'm not a virgin and uh i've definitely pornography you know all of that stuff whatever i tried to actually imitate some of the things i was seeing videos like all of that but one thing i, I would say that it helps me now is is seriously because a lot of women from my past they'll hit me up on instagram or they'll hit me up in my message on my inbox on facebook and i'll be like lord and uh one thing i do that's when um i, I do I, I write a lot of poetry i write a lot i think you know i'll come up with skits and different things like that and as soon as that happens you know if, if praying and reading my bible isn't helping me then then honestly i go and i sit down i pull out a pad and I start, you know, God just starts giving me different concepts and ideas. Or I might start, you know, exercising or whatever. Or I just hit up a friend and we just start talking. And, man, after five minutes, it, it just it fades to the back of my mind. So, yeah. And um, last thing, one thing that helped um, during this time is a lot of the things, a lot of this uh, slipping that you're doing, you decide that before you get there. I realized that whenever I had a girlfriend, anytime you, you make a mistake or whatever, it was a decision you made before yeah. it even happened. You decided yeah. that she was going to spend the night. And it's like, oops, I can't believe. So you knew what was possible. <laughs> so you got to start setting some things up in your life to prevent things. Not just because sometimes you feel like, oh, I'm strong so I can deal with it. I can handle it. And it's like, don't don't play yourself. Like, set some boundaries for yourself. Some non-sin boundaries. Um, um, I read Boy Meets Girl when I was a kid by Joshua Harris. And that, that changed my concept where he said set up some some dotted yellow lines like on a road like you could tell you're not over the edge of the road but it kind of lets you know oh, okay getting too far start turning back around set up some guidelines that are away from the cliff so that you can start having a, a red light go off like okay you know this is a little too much i said i wouldn't do this before the sin line so you have time to turn back around so hopefully that helps man uh hit us up if you feel bold enough um if you want to write another one man anybody else out there go to trackstarsradio.com Go to Noteworthy and submit your Noteworthy. All right, let's go back into some music. You in the field with the track stars, Ryan Righteous, Sean Tanner, DJ Jeremiah. Let's go.